Hello everyone. In this short video, I will be discussing on pediatric hysterectomy. The pediatric hysterectomy is somewhat different than the hysterectomy from an adult patient because history is normally obtained from the mother or guardian, even father of the child. So, in this video, I will be discussing on components of the pediatric hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is divided into various components so that you will not miss the important details when you are taking the history. As medical students, it is very important to follow this uh, systematic approach in order to take a history. So now let's see what are the components of a pediatric history. The first component is the introduction. In, in introduction, we will get the name of the baby, the age, the address and the, from whom the history was taken and their education level. And next the presenting complaint. The, the presenting complaint should have a complaint and a duration. Then the history of presenting complaint. This is the most important part of the history. The presenting complaint should be elaborated in the history of presenting complaint and the other related clinical histories are combined and elaborated in the history of presenting complaint. Next, at the end of the history of presenting complaint, we have the systemic review. In systemic review, we uh, analyze the symptoms of the other systems that is uh, not uh, in the presenting complaint. So, after the a systemic review, we can ask the past medical history and past surgical history. Then the allergy history. Allergy history should be of food allergies, medication allergies and allergies for plasters. Then the birth history. We usually do not take the birth history in a, when taking a history from an adult patient but in a pediatric history, birth history is very important. In birth history, we have to take the mode of delivery, antenatal, postnatal complications, birth, birth weight and if any uh, neonatal complications with hospital stays, we have to take all those history. And next, the developmental history. So, assessing the development of the child is very important in pediatric history taking. So, uh, in the developmental history, we assess the gross motor, fine motor, speech and language and social and social development of the child. The each milestone should be remembered and practiced by the medical students since the beginning of their clinical training. So that you will remember the each milestones by practice. In the illustrated pediatric book and other pediatric textbooks, these uh, milestones are clearly given. So, after the developmental history, we have to take the immunization history. So, according to the immunization schedule of the country, the last vaccine taken by the child and the next vaccine, what is the due date, if there are any reactions occurred due to the uh, past vaccines and any if special vaccines given that is not in the usual uh, immunization schedule. So all those uh, things should be in the immunization history. After the immunization history, we can have the diet history or the nutritional history. So it is very important to have a 24 hour diet recall, especially in children with uh, nutrition problems and uh, who are having failure thriving and growth faltering like issues. So, so it is very important to have a 24 hour diet recall and uh, calculate the calorie amount uh, and calculate the calorie intake and the required calorie and identify any calorie deficit. So after the diet history or the nutrition history, we can get the family history. The family history, the pedigree diagram is very important. In the pedigree diagram, we assess whether the, whether the mother and father are consanguineous and any other chronic uh, illnesses or any related illnesses that have genetic predisposition to the presenting complaint are there 
such as, uh, for example, if the child is having febrile seizures, and whether the parents also had the febrile seizures in their childhood, and other chronic diseases. So after the family history, uh, it is the social history. In social history, it is it's a, it's a broad history. Uh, it is mainly depend on the presenting complaint and the problems of the child. So basically, you have to know the economic, uh, the financial situation of the family, the occupations of the parents, and the risk factors for the child's presenting complaint. What are the risk factors? Any predisposing factors, and sometimes the closest hospital to the child's home, and any transportation modes available. Like that, social history is depending on the presenting complaint. I'll be discussing the history taking with several common uh, presenting complaints in uh, my next videos and I'll be discussing on the uh, pediatric examination and also and making pediatric summaries and problem lists that will be in next videos. So in this video I discussed about the basic components of the pediatric history taking. The before winding up the today's video, I'll remember again the, the components of the pediatric history. The introduction, presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint, the systemic review, past medical history, past surgical history, allergy history, birth history, development history, immunization history, then the nutritional history or the diet history, and the family history and the social history. By following this uh, template, the medical students can get their histories without uh, losing the main components of their history. So, practice taking histories and uh, by, by practicing only, you can develop your history taking abilities. In next pediatric video, I will be discussing on how to take a history of a febrile child. So thank you for watching this video, have a nice day.